The Euros have been full of shocking results so far, and has easily been one of the most unpredictable tournaments I've ever watched. However, if I told you the winner of the whole tournament could lie in this one match, you'd call me crazy. But here I am, telling you that the winner of Spain vs Germany has the best chance to lift the trophy on July 21st. And neither of these teams are ranked in the top three as favorites to win. Which version of Germany will show up, bro? Because we've seen them go through some very high highs, some very interesting low lows. I reckon Spain slaps Slovakia and then get slapped by Germany. If we examine the form of these two squads, you'll begin to notice something. Just in the Euros, Germany has topped their group with 7 points undefeated and has scored the most goals for. Spain, on the other hand, has won all three of their group stage matches and topped the group of death all without conceding a single goal. Their matches in the round of 16 were just as successful with Germany defeating what was a promising Denmark side 2-0 and Spain thrashing underdogs Georgia 4-1. In spite of all these wins though, these teams are not favorites to win right now. Most fans are putting France, Portugal and even England ahead of them this summer. What are you, an idiot? Luckily for Spain and Germany, however, two of those teams are on the same side of the bracket, meaning they could almost avoid them on the way to the final. You see, Germany has played France twice in the last year or so, most recently in March of 2023, and Die Shaft had a field day. France were completely outclassed tactically. Between both of their recent matches, France lost with an aggregate score of 4-1. to one. Even though France is riddled with superstars, it still feels unlikely they could beat Spain or Germany. France weren't even able to top their group, only beating Austria 1-0, who ended up topping the group. It's unfair to say that France are favorites when they are drawing against Poland and are only scoring two goals in three group stage matches. It's time to go! And believe it or not, Portugal looked worse in my opinion. The last time Spain played Portugal Boom. was two years ago in the Nations League, and the Portuguese were sent home losing 1-0. <laughs> But that was a while ago. In the group stage, Portugal Boom. took a huge loss against Georgia 2-0 and only beat Chesnia 2-1. And Chesnia didn't even make it out of the group stage. There's lots of critics who are back in this Portugal side, but I just don't see it working out for them. On paper, Spain and Germany are miles ahead of their competitors, and they should be able to get the job done against Portugal or France. If one of these countries cross paths with England, however, it is almost certain they can come away with a win. Is she mad? I don't know what you're drinking in that tea, you know. Why do I say this? Well, even though it's been more than two years since these teams have faced each other, with the way things are going with Southgate right now and how Slovakia almost managed to knock out the favourites in the round of 16. For a long time there, the tactical foresight of Southgate was almost like the Titanic was sinking and instead of getting the lifeboats, he's rearranging the deck chairs. It was painful. When England has to be tested against a title running side, things might get sloppy for them. Germany might not have a better team on paper, but with the tactical genius of Julian Nagelsmann alone, England can easily be defeated by Germany. This is the big question. What's he getting? That tastes like promotion! Yeah! While Spain, on the other hand, have probably the most exciting attack in the tournament and the most defensively solid team. Even though they have a lot of young and inexperienced players up front, they can always rely on the midfield for goals, which makes the Spain team a threat for England. It seems like as fans, we've been seeing a lot of exciting storylines in football this year, but the best yet will be in this tournament, there's no doubt. Spain has a team that is full of winners and some of the best in the world, but it has been over 12 years since Spain has taken home a major international trophy, and they're out for redemption. Their manager, Luis de la Fuente, has never managed a senior team at this level before. It almost seems do that they would create history like winning the Euros for the first time since 2012. Germany are in a much similar situation where they haven't won anything since the famous 2014 World Cup, and in general have been incredibly underwhelming in the last 10 years. They had an early exit in the 2018 and 2022 World Cups, and were knocked out by England in the round of 16 in Euro 2020. The history of the country in football and the values of the team have gone completely sideways. Germany too is looking to redeem themselves on home soil. So both teams are looking at a crazy storyline of renewing their underwhelming performances in the last 10 years. And it would be crazy if they do. Let's go! Come on! But when they play each other, who is more likely to come out on top? If we look at Germany from a tactical perspective, Nagelsmann is going to play a really high press. They're going to utilize their speed up front to force the opponent out and eventually reclaim the ball. And in possession, Nagelsmann likes to utilize the wide areas, where players like Kimmich, Wurz, Gundogan, or even Sané have a really good idea of what they should be doing. Musiala isn't much of a crosser, but when he's on the field with Havertz, they can be really dangerous on the inside. However, there is times where Nicholas Fulkrug is playing up front, and that's when Germany are whipping those balls into the box and taking advantage of his aerial presence. In terms of defensive abilities, Germany have Rudiger and Jonathan Ta, probably the best man-to-man -man markers in the sport. But I have to say, Germany are lacking in the fullback department. Middlestadt is decent, but he lacks the defensive ability to keep up with elite dribblers. Kimmich is by far the best option, but again, he was struggling against Vinicius Jr. in the Champions League. So it's tough to say how he would perform. Germany has an elite counterattack game, 
with players like Sané and Musiala who are able to drive the team forward very quickly, so it will be fascinating to see how they do that against Spain. Because Spain are very good at countering teams that can press. When they're cycling through possession, they're often pushing their fullbacks up, while the midfield tucks in to create this back four setup that makes it pretty difficult for the opponent to get a hold of the ball. That's because it forces the other team to break the defensive line, and it can create a lot of space up front for Nico Williams and Lamine Yamal to get sent through on that long ball. Their passing game is their best asset, and recently, we've seen Spain bring back the classic tiki-taka playstyle we all used to know. With Spain's defensive tactics, we see a lot of high pressing as well. The strikers are always looking to cut off that switch. If somehow they get pushed back into their half, it's typical of them to fall back into a 4-5-1, with a very stiff and rigid defensive structure and then they patiently wait and win the ball at the right time. You have uh, any idea what that's about? When it comes down to it, this match will be determined by which players can make the biggest impact and change the game for their team. Germany have Jamal Musiala and Kai Havertz who are going to be the main outlet for goal, as well as Rudiger at the back which will be a big factor in the performance of this German side. <laughs> Rudiger has had a great season at Real Madrid and has really improved in the past two years as a player. Musiala as well has had a great season in Euro's campaign so far, scoring three goals so far, so he's definitely someone that needs to be watched out for. I feel like a lot of people forget about Kai Havertz, but he's still a serious threat in front of goal and is having some great form in this tournament so far. Spain, however, are having so many players turn up for them. Cucurella is one of them. Despite being painfully bad for Chelsea in the club season, he had an amazing game against Croatia and is in the best form of his life for Spain right now. Fabian Ruiz is also going off this tournament, scoring two goals and dropping man of the match performances against Croatia and Georgia. Honestly, I didn't know he could be so good when I first saw him get put in the starting 11. Lastly, Nico Williams is also playing exceptionally well. I don't think there was one time where he lost the ball against Italy, and he also dropped a goal and an assist against Georgia, which is insane. In the end, we're not going to know the final result until match day. So let me know in the comments what team you think is going to go through. And as always, I'll see you guys next week.